In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O Lord, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all of our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. 
I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near me who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body, what good is it? So also faith of itself. If it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, you have faith and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The word of the Lord.
crucified to me and die to the world. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah still others one of the prophets. And Jesus asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, you are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. Jesus summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. Caesarea Philippi was a very ancient and noble town. Over the course of centuries, different occupiers took control of the area. Each one left their own mark as far as religion. So for instance, about 800 years before the, our Lord, the Babylonians and the Canaanite people were there, and they built a beautiful temple to their god Baal, B-A-A-L, the god of fertility. And then about 300 years before our Lord, the Greeks came and they built their beautiful temple to the god Pan, the god of nature. Then at the time of Jesus, the Romans had built a temple and that was to the god Caesar because at this time, Caesar Augustus had been declared a god by the Roman Senate. So there we have it. In the midst of all of this though, Jesus asks the apostles, who do people say that I am. Well, Caesarea Philippi is the northernmost part of Israel, right near the Syrian border. So it's Jew and Gentile. So it would have been expected that maybe some people thought he was sort of like one of these deities, sort of like an avatar that became incarnate. But then the Jews maybe, and the apostles say this, would have thought, well, is this Elijah? Is this John the Baptist? Is this one of the other prophets? Keep in mind though, they're all dead. So that makes Jesus a ghost or maybe a reincarnate figure of one of those. So with all of that in mind, our Lord point blank asks the apostles who have heard his teaching, who have witnessed his miracles, who do you say that I am? Peter says, you are the Christ, meaning the Messiah, the anointed one. Good answer. But Peter's not ready for how right of an answer he gave. Our Lord goes on, he says, yes, I am the Messiah, but I am going to go to Jerusalem, be rejected by the Jewish leaders, arrested, killed, crucified, but then I will rise. Jesus is speaking then, not of a glorious kind of Messiah, 
So some expectation that the Messiah would be like this figure that came down with an army of angels to wipe out the Romans and establish the old kingdom of Israel. That was very popular at the time. Instead, Jesus is the suffering servant Messiah, spoken of by Isaiah, as we heard in our first reading, and also the prophet Jeremiah. He has come into this world to reconcile us to Almighty God. So Jesus, true God, has become true man so that he could perfectly reveal God's truth and love to us. He could show us what it really means to be fully human and to live in that image of God. He offered the perfect sacrifice on the cross to forgive sins, and he rose to give us the hope of everlasting life in heaven. Moreover, our Lord would establish the church and establish the sacraments so that human beings that we are, we could also share in that sanctifying grace, that life and love of the Holy Trinity. How beautiful. Keep in mind, though, Peter doesn't want to hear this. He doesn't want to hear Jesus being killed, crucified. He doesn't want that, so he rebukes Jesus. But Jesus says to him, get behind me, Satan. Satan. In Hebrew, the word means the adversary, the one who tempts, the one who makes us trip and fall, the one who takes us off the right path. So Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. No, Christ has his mission. And with that then, he says, if you want to be my disciple, you can't just say you're the Christ. You have to live it. And that means you have to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. As St. James would say, the faith has to be put into action. It has to be lived. What good is saying, oh Jesus, you're the Christ, the Son of God, the Lord and Savior, if we don't live it? And that's what Jesus is saying. So for each of us then, the question is, our Lord asks us, who do you say that I am? Granted, we could easily say, well, Jesus, I'm a Catholic, I'm a Christian, you're the Lord, the Savior, and so on. But then he tells us to live it. And there's the challenge. It means then that we have to deny ourselves. There's nothing pejorative in that. Rather, to deny ourselves means God comes first. God has given us everything. And so each day we make that sacrifice to take time for daily prayer. We are here for Mass on Sunday. We also take time to read sacred scripture or to continue to study about our faith, do some other kind of spiritual reading. We take time to examine our lives, to go to confession, because after all, at times, we do sin, but our Lord wants to reconcile us in all though we're saying Christ comes first, God comes first. We also make sure we put it into action. So in the sense of striving to do what is good in the eyes of God, living by God's truth, by God's commandments. That's our life. God comes first. So anything that would take us away from that, we say, get behind me, Satan. For instance, some of you may have had the temptation today from someone that said, oh, you're so busy. Why go to Mass? Or you have so many things to do. You have soccer practice, you have this practice and that practice. Why go to Mass? Get behind me, Satan. God comes first. But then our Lord says, take up your cross and follow. The cross is who we are. Never forget that. When we were baptized, we died with Christ and rose to a new life. When we were baptized and confirmed, the priest signed us with the cross using holy chrism, showing us that a sacred seal has been set on our heart. Therefore, to say, take up the cross, follow me, means to live a Christ-like life. Yes, we need God's grace, 
And that's why we have sacraments. That's why our church teaches. But nevertheless, we follow. We do what is good in the eyes of God. We try to live as best we can by the commandments and everything else. Get behind me, Satan. So important in our world today because the cross has to be a living sign in our own lives. People have to see that we are committed to our faith. Now, we have to keep on guard. It's not easy. You leave this church and you go into Caesarea Philippi. And all around, you're going to see the different temples. You're going to see the temple to the god Caesar. We could call it the temple of politics today. And the temple of politics has the Satans that say, oh, follow the party line. Sure, you can call yourself a Catholic. You could have rosaries jingling in your pocket, but follow the party line. Isn't it a shame that so many politicians who call themselves Catholic worship in the temple of Caesar? They aren't following the cross. And then you have the temple of Pan, the god of nature. We could call it the temple of materialism. Go after all the wealth. It's all about money. It's all about what you can accumulate. Go after that. And then there's the temple to the god Baal, which is the temple today of hedonism, self-gratification, sensual pleasure. Go after that. It's going to make you happy, maybe socially popular and so on. But we have to say, get behind me, Satan and keep our focus on Christ and follow. Not easy, but keep in mind too, our Lord wants to help us. Even if we fall, he's there to pick us up. For you young people, keep in mind, our Lord takes nothing away from you. He gives you everything, and he gives you the promise of everlasting life. He gives you the sharing of infinite love of Almighty God. But the world and all those temples simply take. And when you're left empty, no one's there to pick you up. No one is there to help you. If we went to Caesarea Philippi today, and I've been there, it's all ruins. And many people who invest their lives worshiping in the modern temples today, in the end, their life is in ruins. And again, you young people, think about this. You've probably seen it. If you're in college or in high school, you've probably seen kids ruin their lives because they went into those temples. I've been a priest 37 years, and I've seen good young people get off the track go into those temples, and what are they left with? An addiction to alcohol, addiction to drugs, addiction to some other kind of substance, an unwanted pregnancy, an incurable venereal disease, a hopelessness that even led to suicide. I've seen it, and it's tragic. Christ offers us real life, and that's why every day, we have to answer the question, who do you say that I am? And then put it into action, taking up the cross and following. I have a friend who is a politician. I don't have many friends who are politicians because they don't want to associate with me, as you probably know for good reason. But in my other parish, we had a good Catholic politician, Dick Black. And he is retired now from politics, but he was a Marine colonel, a lawyer. He also was a convert to the faith. Then also he was a state assemblyman for several terms. And then lastly, he was a state senator for a couple of terms. In his office though, in Richmond, he had a big crucifix, probably three feet in length. And sometimes he was mocked for that. What's a crucifix doing in the legislative offices? So he was asked once, why do you have a crucifix? And he says, because it reminds me who I am and why I'm here and what I have to do. He was one of the most pro-life legislators we've had in years. So my brothers and sisters, that has to be our attitude too. 
It's not simply lip service, but rather it's taking that message to heart. And like St. James says, putting it into action. So today, our dear Lord asks you, who do you say that I am? What's your answer going to be? And whatever it is, he's going to say, follow me. Are you ready? May God bless you. Let us stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, you said that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you would be in their midst and hear their prayers. With this confidence, we offer these petitions. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and religious freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, especially in Afghanistan, and for those who serve in our diplomatic, military, security, and intelligence services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the safety of the construction workers and the success of our building project, we pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. For our children and teachers in school, especially at St. Agnes, that they will be safe from all harm and strive to do their best, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us, and for our parish seminarians, Tony Bennett, Mike Nugent, James Joseph, Gabriel Godet, and for Anne Whalen and Caroline Jones, postulants with the Nashville Dominicans, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, especially Pauline Saunders, and for our deceased, especially Michael Hurley, and those who died in the terrorist attacks on 9-11, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Salima Dudu, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all our prayers, even those prayers held within our hearts, and to grant them in accord with thy divine will, through Christ our Lord, amen. In calling upon the prayers of our Blessed Mother, we pray. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial, the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
A few announcements. Our poor box collection this weekend is for the Red Cloud Indian School, staffed by the Jesuits on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. Youth group meets this Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. as usual. The inquiry class begins this Wednesday, September 15th. Anyone who's interested in learning more about the Catholic faith, any of you here, who may not be Catholic but are interested, you come to church with your families, why not come and find out more about our faith? So information is in the bulletin, 7.30 p.m. in the church parish hall. St. Joseph's kickoff, so the St. Joseph's Men's League is going to begin this Thursday, September 16th at 7.30 p.m. So for all of you men here, and that includes, includes young men, you're invited to come to this kickoff meeting and therefore find out what we can do as far as service projects, also fraternal spirituality together. Youth group is collecting food for refugee pantry packs, so in coordination with Catholic Charities. Please leave your donations in the bins near the church entrances by Tuesday, September 21st. Now the bulletin has the different kinds of foods that are needed because this is primarily serving the Afghan refugees coming in and they have a particular kind of diet. Sunday, October 3rd, we're going to have our parish picnic here at St. Agnes. So mark your calendars, further information will be coming. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the root of souls, amen.